Hi, this is Jessica with Cutesy Crafts. Today I'm going to show you how to make a scarf out of loop yarn. I used a little bit of a different stitch for the scarf just for fun, but you can use just a simple knit stitch for the entire thing if you're a beginner. My kids made a bunch for their friends and it was super easy and fun for them, but let me give you a close up. This gives it a little bit of a different texture. This is called the seed stitch. And I'll show you step by step how to make this. This yarn is super, super cozy, just like the other ones. And I love the different colors that this has and the texture that it gives for a scarf. It would make a perfect gift for a friend or a family member. And it's really easy to make because just like all of the other loop yarn projects, you don't need any crochet hooks, no knitting needles, and you don't need to know how to crochet or knit. It's really easy. So let's get started making this fun and easy loop yarn scarf. Today I'll be working with this easy wool yarn and it's a wool yarn that has a lot different feel and texture than the other yarn that I've tried. But it still has the loops that make it easy for us to do this without any tools. I'm going to try using just two skeins of yarn and we will see how big of a scarf we can get. And just for a reference, this has 11 yards of yarn in it. The inside packaging of the yarn actually has a pattern on it so you can do this if you want. I thought it was interesting that they used a seed stitch that I haven't tried out before which is alternating knit stitches and purl stitches so that's what we're going to try out today. With this thicker yarn, I'm just going to count out an odd number of loops for using the seed stitch. You have to have an odd number and I'm going to count out 11 loops. My kids were making scarves for their friends for Christmas and they used this skinnier loop yarn. They used only 10 loops, but the scarf kind of folded in on itself. So I would recommend if you're using this kind of loop yarn to at least probably do like 15, 16 loops. So I've got my 11 loops here and I'm gonna take the 12th loop and bring it up through the back of the 11th loop for a knit stitch. And then since we're alternating, the next loop is going to be a purl stitch. So I'm going to bring this loop down from the front down to the back of the second one. It's going to get a little messy here, especially on this first row. So for the next one, knit stitch. And the next loop is a purl stitch. Purl stitch is bringing the loop yarn from the front to the back. Knit stitch is bringing the loop from the back to the front of our first row. Purl stitch. Knit stitch. And if this is your first time using loop yarn, I would just stick with doing all one stitch unless you're feeling really adventurous and think that you can manage. And then your last stitch should be a knit stitch. I'm already able to tell that this is a little bit more difficult of a yarn to work with than something like this. So if you are a beginner, also recommend starting with something more like this. I just really liked the color and texture of this wool yarn and had to give it a try. Okay, so since we ended with a knit stitch here, we want to do the opposite for the next row. And I'm going to start with a purl stitch. and a knit stitch. So we're just alternating in both directions. And then a purl stitch. And a knit stitch. A purl stitch. And a knit 
stitch and then this row will be ending in a purl stitch. Make sure as you're going, especially with this small project and with this crazy yarn, that you count and make sure you always have the same amount of loops that you started out with. So I should have 11 loops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. If you find you're going along and you don't have that many loops anymore, then you need to check around and see where you made a mistake and undo your progress to that point so that you can fix it. So especially with something small like this, make sure you're frequently checking that. So for our next row, since we ended with a purl stitch, we will start with a knit stitch bringing the yarn up from the back to the front. And we're just gonna continue that alternating pattern all the way till we finish this skein of yarn and then I'll show you how to do a transition. Okay, now I've run out of yarn, so what I'm gonna do is leave three loops here at the end. Don't stitch those in yet. And then I'm bringing in my new skein of yarn here. And you wanna take the first three loops on your new skein and put them behind the last three loops on your previous one. And then what you'll do is treat each of the pairs as a single loop. So this is going to be treated as one loop. This will be treated the two as one loop and then this. So just continue on this one. I'm on a purl stitch. So I'm going to bring that forward bring the two loops through to the back and I'm alternating so we're going to do a knit stitch take these two loops through the back of the previous row and then these last two bringing through the front and then just continue like normal but when you get back to these three loops when you're coming the other way, make sure that you are still treating these each as one loop, one loop, one loop, even though they're double thick. So now I've gotten back to where the double loops are here. So I'm treating this like one loop from my previous row. I'm on a knit stitch, so I'm bringing the new yarn through the back, through both of those loops. And then for the next one, doing a knit stitch and bringing it through the front of both of those loops. And then the third, a knit stitch through the back. It'll be a little bit bulkier there, but it will blend in once you get the whole thing done. Using two skeins of yarn, mine ended up being about 72 inches. You can use more than that if you want a longer scarf. So I've got a long tail right here and I don't need all of that, but I do want to save two of the loops. So count over one, two loops and then snip off the remainder. And then those last two loops, you want to take the thread that's holding them together here and just snip those open to make a straight tail there. Now you want to start at the opposite end of the tail take the loop that's at the end and the one that's next to it and you want to put the one next to it inside the beginning loop and then pull up that second loop and you're going to continue it across taking the next loop putting it inside the original loop and pulling up do that until you get to the end Once you get to the other end, take the tail and beat it through the loop and then secure it with a knot. And I like to make sure it's extra secure by tying a double knot. Next, take the tail and weave it through some of the previous stitches so that it doesn't show. And then snip off the excess yarn. 
now that you'll have a nice finished and secure edge. Hope you had fun making this loop yarn scarf. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'm also going to leave a link to where I purchased the loop yarn in the description below. Make sure to watch my other videos on how to make blankets, um, particularly the baby blanket one shows you how to do a really cool border around the edge of the blanket. And give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Head over to my blog, cutesycrafts.com, for more fun craft ideas, and I hope you guys all have a great week.